this a little Monday, but this isn't the ECU team of years past, especially with this D coordinator. Can you just go into a little detail about the challenges you have getting to face the Pirates this upcoming weekend? Well, they're coming off a big win. You know what I mean? So that's a, um, a huge win on the road against South Florida. Uh, you know, so they're, they're coming with a lot of momentum. Um, their defensive coordinator um, knows option football has been around it. I mean, so has Coach Houston. You know, and so they got guys on their defensive side of the ball. There's no option football. So I guess from, you know, from the, our defensive side of it there, we're going to play offense that has a quarterback that's playing well with some confidence, a returner. He's got weapons, you know, to um, throw the ball, run the ball. They're playing pretty, they played pretty well last, last week up front. You know, they're able to run the ball. Also, able, they're able to protect him. And defensively, you know, we got going against a defensive coordinator and a head coach that no option football. So, you know, those, those are going to be definitely challenges for us. Thank you. Uh, Gary Lambert, NavySports.com. Hey, Kenny. Gary. Doing a piece on uh, CJ. And uh, when you go back over his previous two years, as he's had an obvious impact in, in your varsity program, uh, you know, blocking, big plays, timely plays, can you just begin to sort of encapsulate his impact, what he means to that program? Yeah, he's probably been one of the most consistent football players on our team ever since he broke into the, some playing time. I think actually uh, SMU a couple of years ago when we went there was one of his first games they played and he played really well. And that's kind of when it caught everybody's eyes. Um, he's always been a smart kid. He's very quiet. He's a, he's a very thoughtful kid, a young man, but he's a really, really smart football player. One of the smartest football players, I, I believe, that we've had at any position. Uh, I, I'll share one story that I think kind of encapsulate CJ. So he didn't practice much uh, the Army weeks, going up to Army week, uh, the last game we played. And, you know, we were, we were preparing for a stunt, um, but he hadn't seen it live. He, he didn't see it, you know, was, wasn't able to do it, block that live all week, you know, because he was injured um, and didn't practice much. Uh, but we played him because of his experience and how valuable he was. So it was actually, um, it was Malcolm's uh, long touchdown run, the first one down the sidelines. So he kind of came and he saw uh, the blitz coming. And he, he didn't even, you know, you're, you're kind of yelling, thinking, you know, look out, here's, it's coming. And he didn't even give any indication or signal to the defense that he saw the corner coming. But at the last set, last second, he cut him, you know, blocked him, and was able to spring us for a long run. And we we're all like saying, "Man, thank goodness that was CJ," because not only because it's hard enough just to see it, because it's a very well disguised blitz, but he didn't get any reps at it live during leading up to the game, but he yeah. saw it in the game and was able to execute it um, in the biggest game in the crunch situation. But that's CJ. Picked it up with, without any fanfare. I mean, everybody's, you know, celebrating Malcolm's run. But if CJ doesn't get that block, that, I mean, that play doesn't, it, the play doesn't work. And so that's, he's made a lot of big plays, obviously, with the ball in his hands over the years. But he's made a ton of plays, too, with the ball not in his hands. Yeah, the, the, when you think of him, you think of those few times he gets a touch, whether it's, you know, an incredible catch like Air Force and there's a few others, or, or, uh, just making a play in space as a runner, getting open, you know, and getting that first down for you. But last everybody, week, I mean, he, yeah. he, yeah, last week, third and 14. And everybody knows, though, that A-backs don't play if they don't block at Navy. And so there are a lot of tough guys that are 5'8", 5 5'9", 5 10, whatever, play in that position. But are they – the way he just really enjoys – getting out there and exploding into somebody that's probably big enough to, you know, beat him up on the street. But <laughs> talk about that. Like, they're not all quite like that, are they? Well, most of the guys are tough young men. Yeah. Because um, you got to be a tough guy to, at that size to play Division One football. And what we ask those guys to do, I mean, you're blocking interior 
the linemen, linebackers. A lot of times if you're that side, you're on the perimeter, you're a slot receiver. Uh, you know, what we asked him to do there in the box. But um, the thing that I appreciate about CJ, he's probably, like I said, one of the smartest football players that I've been around. Um, he may not say much, but he's taking in everything. I mean, he's like a sponge. You can just tell that when he plays that he does well in listening to all the coach to pay his coaching points. Uh, so he knows what's going on, but he's also able to operate, you know, on the field. So one of, one of the best slot backs we've had. Most Probably one of the most complete slot backs that we had. He's a great receiver, can run with the ball. He's smart, can block, he's tough. Um, you know, when you're looking for a slot back, uh, we're going out recruiting, you're looking for C.J. Williams. And he can throw it, too, now and then. <laughs> he can throw the ball, too. Yes, very good. They complete a lot of balls for us. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Hey, Ken, Kareem from the Post. I'm just curious, you got four quarters of offensive football last week. How do you guys um, stay consistent and, and keep it rolling forward? Uh, just practicing hard cream, just like we did last week. Come back to work. Uh, you know, hopefully we got some consistency with the quarterback now that, you know, Dalen will be starting, you know, another game. So I think that would definitely help us uh, from that standpoint. Our guys have been working hard. Uh, some of our young linemen that haven't played as much are getting more comfortable in there. By Six Terra, uh, to share a... Um, uh, Bryce, uh, Pierce Banbury, uh, Justin Smith, um, you know what I mean? So those, uh, those are guys that have been, um, you know, I think just getting in there, they're just playing a lot, playing a lot better, you know what I mean? And uh, just guys that are, are playing, playing hard and, and, and doing, having those guys in there has helped us. You know, what I mean, the guys, young guys that haven't played much. Um, you know, so I think just having those guys in there, a quarterback that's played two and a half games, whatever he's played, maybe two games. You know, uh, half of half of BYU, half of Tulane, a full game of Temple. So you got a guy that's played two games. So hopefully, some of the experience will help us continue to get get better. Nelson mentioned that the offensive line seemed to come with a different mindset to practice last week. Uh, was that something that you noticed, or what did you notice? Um, no, most definitely. I guess in the, the, the tackle I was talking about, sorry, not Justin Smith, just, just himself. But, yes, um, you know, we we got pushed around the previous game, you know, uh, up in Colorado Springs. So we, we came back with a different mentality and tried to improve on that. And I, I thought our guys played with purpose, and it was a great week of practice last week. And they, it was just okay yesterday. Hopefully, we'll have a better day today. But, you know, that's got to carry on to this week, too, Kareem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ben Byron. You're on uh, mute, Ben. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Sorry. Problem is when I unmute myself, I can no longer hear you guys. So uh, sorry about that. Uh, this is Philip Pilkington, the intern at 94.3 The Game in Greenville for Patrick Johnson. He wanted me to ask um, kind of an off-topic question about the actual game itself. But Brian Blick, your director of football operation, is a Greenville native. And uh, has he talked much about coming back to the game and was for the game? And was he able to uh, get any extra tickets for friends and family maybe from a uh, – coach or player that wasn't going to have as many people attending? Well, I, yeah, I, I obviously know Brian is, you know, from Greenville. He's my right-hand man. You know, being the director of football operations, nothing on our football program happens without Brian Blick. Been an integral part of our football program for many years. In fact, I think he, he proposed to his wife there when we played many years ago. I don't remember what year that was, but you know, he, he, he proposed to his wife. And so um, I know it's always special for him to be able to go home. Um, he hasn't talked much about the tickets, or he hasn't really said much, but that's Brian. He doesn't want to call attention to himself. He just does his job. Uh, not only is he a, a true member of the football brotherhood, but, you know, being a, 
a former Marine. Marines are like that. They they put everyone above themselves. And so he hasn't said much about it, but I know it's exciting for him to be able to go home. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Catherine from the Naples Capitol. Hey, Coach, how are you? Um, I'm working on a story about Bijan Nichols. And obviously, you know, we haven't talked about him much because, of course, he was a freshman last year. But he's already made – a lot of impact obviously the two, the two big field goals this year 50 yard last weekend kickers kind of usually are off on their own but you know what is it about him his training that makes him already as special as he is well last year we knew we had somebody special just you know he won the, the job outright he beat out guys that we thought were going to be the starting kickers but just uh, his strength of his leg and just the calmness of under pressure uh, showed us that he was, you know, was a really good kicker. And obviously he went, had game winners last year. Mm -hmm. You know, Tulane, the bowl game, uh, kick, you know, kicked some big kicks for us. And um, he's won some big games for us this year, as you said. And so he's earned the right to d to tell me when, when we kick or not. You know, so we adjust our practice schedule off him. Uh, so normally we'll go one period less. We normally do field goal block at the end, field goal and field goal block at the end. But I don't know anything about kicking. I just know if they tell me their legs sore or whatever, like, hey, if your legs sore, brother, well, we won't kick today. You know, I want to make sure you can kick a, you know, 50 yarder in the wind. And so, um, you know, I normally come before practice. The the specialists are normally out there early stretching, and he either gives me a thumbs up or thumbs down, and we, that determines whether he, we're going to do our field goal field goals that day but in all my years of coaching there's been no player that's determined that but um he's earned that right <laughs> has there ever been a player you know beyond kicker that has kind of earned this level of maturity and you know sway and practice not this early Catherine it's just I've just been impressed with him he doesn't get rattled you know what I mean he's just the guy that's who's the he's so calm you know what I mean? And uh, he's got a big leg. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that can kick when the pressure's not on, but he's kicked so many times. Game winning kicks under pressure. I mean, he's, he's been amazing. Thank you. Scott Wyckoff, WBAL. Hey, Coach. Scott Wyckoff, WBAL Radio in Baltimore. What's impressed you the most about Terrell Adams making the transition? so late this season from safety to linebacker and being able to step in as a starter when you needed him so badly? His work ethic. I mean, he and his brother, he has a twin brother in our team, Josh, and those two guys, I mean, they are machines. I mean, they, they come from great parents, you know, they come from a great family. Um, but he's just a hard worker. Always got a smile on his face. I mean, he's a kid that, you know, you can yell at and coach hard. He just says, yes, sir, and just keeps running. I mean, he just – I mean, you wish everybody was like Josh and, you know what I mean, and, and Terrell. You know, both of their brothers are the same. But for Terrell, I've uh, just been impressed to move to the linebacker position. I mean, you're playing in the box against guys, you know, almost 100 pounds heavier than him. So you got to be a tough sucker, man. And you got to be a tough dude, and that's him. I mean, uh, Terrell Adams and his brother Josh, and you got, I know you asked about Terrell, but – it's hard to talk about Terrell without talking about Josh because um, it's kind of cool to see two twins. You know what I mean? They, they come up every day and they, they chest bump each other, you know, and they come out to practice. I'm like, yeah, you guys act like it's the first time you've seen each other. <laughs> or they stretch right next to each other. You know what I mean? It's really cool to see twin brothers, you know, like, can't you guys stretch on different sides of the field? And they just kind of laugh, you know what I mean? Just, uh, but they're, they're, he's an awesome young man. Thanks a lot, coach. Uh, just a reminder, if you have a question, uh, chat question, or type question in the chat function, uh, Bill Wagner. Hey, Kenny. Um, I talked to Paul Johnson today, and he was very complimentary of the job you've done at Navy and was proud of you. Um, can you just talk about what Paul has meant to your career? I mean, when in a milestone like 100 wins, I'm sure you think about the guy that dragged you into this whole mess. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I mean, he's a um, – sorry. 
I definitely wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Paul Johnson. It's kind of funny because um, playing for him, I didn't like him because <laughs> I was a backup. I mean, I, I was so mad coming to meetings and stuff. I'd look at him. I'd be so mad. <laughs> but then um, I, I respected him as a man. He's a great person. Coach Johnson is not a BS, so he tells you straight. Sometimes you don't like what you hear, but he's a straight shooter. But I owe, I owe everything to him. I mean, that's, um, I mean, I learned all my football from him, but uh, he, he changed my life. Well, the other person I was going to ask you about, he's been your kind of business partner, if you will. And I know you guys have your battles here and again, but uh, Chet Gladchuk as your AD, uh, yeah. can you talk about having Chet there to support you? When, and I know you pushed him at times, and he's argued back, but then usually he comes through for you, doesn't he? How do I put this? I feel like I have a great relationship with Chet. You know, I mean, it's um, – you know, I'm able to say anything to him and, you know, ask him for things and be critical. And but also he does the same, but I'm very grateful for Chet. I mean, he took a chance on me, an O-line coach, never been a head coach before, you know, ex ex having the greatest um, turnaround in Navy football history. And he, he hired me, you know what I mean? And so, I'm very grateful that he took a chance on a guy that had no experience back in 2007. I'm sure there are probably other uh, alumni and stuff probably trying to go get somebody from the SEC or from a big conference or something or, you know, some name guy. I'm sure when he said, like, who? <laughs> who you guys hired? <laughs> oh, he's an online coach. What? I know hiring an hiring online coach. But um, I'm very grateful for Chad. And, and as much as I complain about things, because – I will admit, I, I when we have we meet weekly, and you know, I'll, you know, I'll say, Chad, we need this and that, and Chad will balk, or we, we can't do this and that. And, but eventually, Chad's given me everything I've needed. You know, he's he's things that we've asked for. Um, you know, they cost money. You know, this is in this profession. This is a tough profession to to stay in, and the things that I ask for cost money. And you know, Chad. You know, he's like kind of grits his teeth a little bit and I'll see what I can do. And um, he, he gets it done. So I'm very grateful to Chad. And like, like I said, um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Paul. But also, obviously, I would not be in this, answering this cause if it wasn't for Chad. I mean, he's, um, we have a good relationship. There's a lot of arguing, but, you know, it's for good reason. But there's also, you know, Chad, um, Things he tells me are true, you know, and like, hey, we got to do this. We got to get better at that. And so we've um, been very grateful over the years. You know, like I said, we've been here for 13 years and we meet weekly and discuss things. And uh, Chet's been very, very supportive of our football program. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Dan Tortora. Hey, Coach, how are you? Hey, Dan, how are you? Doing very well. <clears throat> to go to that 100th career uh, win for you, j just to go into that moment, like you said, at turning around Navy and what you've been able to do, uh, bring me into that moment on the field for you and just what was going through your mind when you got to triple digits at 100. Well, I wasn't really thinking about that. I was just hoping, you know, that we could stop the, the two-point conversion. And actually, I didn't look at it. I had my eyes closed, I was praying, and I just heard our team, our side of the bench erupt. Then I was thinking, hopefully we can get the, the onside kick, and so you're always a nervous wreck. And Coach O'Rourke, who's in charge of the onside kick, we practice it weekly, and, you know, we, we spend all this time on it. Sometimes, like, you know, we, we're doing this every week, or, you know, why are we? maybe we should do it every other week. Should we do it every week? And Coach O'Rourke's always on me. Coach, we got to do hands team. Hands team today. He goes, that's right, let's do it. And I'm so grateful that he did it, Dan, because we were able to – we were well prepared for it. Uh, so we didn't we, – we could get that. And so those are my thoughts. Uh, but, I, you know, I didn't really think about it to after to some of the questions. But the, the biggest thing that I said yesterday, Dan, that I have come from me more than, more than the wins of just um, all the calls, texts, emails from former players, uh, coaches or mentors, just anybody, just uh, – 
that's been the coolest thing for me just to reflect on all these players and where they're at. I mean, that to me is like, oh, yeah, well, so-and-so, where's he at now? And, and then just reminisce of different games or different experiences. Um, it makes you realize in this profession, you, you try to win because it's the only way that you can stay in it. If you don't win, you get fired. I mean, it's, it's just the truth. But I realize all the wonderful experience I've had down over the year, they're way, way more important to me than the wins. They, uh, it's been awesome, the relationships and the experiences. And when you look at, you know, to do it for any team, you did it for Navy, you did it for something a lot bigger than just football. And you and I have spoken about that before. There has to be students, there has to be athletes, but there has to serve their country. What does that mean to you to get your 100th win and be there at Navy? And then secondly, what does it mean to represent Navy in the world we're living in right now where, you know, we do need a beacon of hope in these last seven months? Well, the... Um... I don't take it lightly, you know. I don't, I don't like talking about it because it makes it seem like I did everything. But anybody knows, and I mean, there's so many people involved, so so many people, players, coaches, staff, administration. It, it, it's it's a it's, it truly is a program accomplishment. I uh, feel very blessed to have done it here, raised my family here. You know, um, my son's back here working on the staff and. You know, he went to school here, went to elementary school here, went to middle school, Severn River, and Asbury uh, Preschool, and, and uh, Brodnick uh, High School. And so this has been my home. To be able to do it at the school has been awesome. And to be at a school that, that people go out and serve your country after, um, it, it makes it even more special. And like I said, that was probably the coolest thing to hear from guys that are in different places and what they're doing. And they're like, wow, you know, that's really cool that these guys are out there serving our country. They're doing well. Uh, a lot of them have gotten out. And those guys that have gotten out are living around the country and they're all doing well too. And those are the things I, I, I would say that any coach would say that. Just, you know, just your former players, the people they become, those are really your true wins. Those are your true victories. To see the young men, who they become in life, fathers, husbands, productive citizens in our, in our country. Uh, it makes it special being here, Dan, with all that. And then lastly, uh, just uh, to kind of switch gears a little bit in Hawaii, just seeing the recruitment, I know that you have eyes and ears down there, but teams around the country are doing that. Uh, some teams that typically don't recruit there are reaching out there. Now, what does that mean to you, uh, the talent that's there and your connection, obviously, to the island and, and what, what that means for college football and for professional football, that there is that bridge and that more people are starting to notice it? Well, football has always been a big deal in the islands. You know I mean, they, they love football. High school football is huge. Youth football is huge. Uh, you know, obviously got the University of Hawaii there. So it's really cool that guys can be able to branch out. They're not just on the West Coast, now at Pac-12 schools. They've branched out throughout the country. You know, guys are doing well all over. So it's really cool to see that, and hopefully that continues. Thanks, Coach, and congratulations on everything. You deserve it.